Hey everybody, this is Joe with Joe's Premium Firewood, bringing another fun-filled, exciting video. Today's video, I'm gonna be doing some maintenance on my brother's steel 362 chainsaw, because I was the last person to use it. And yes, that will include sharpening the chain. But before I do that, I wanna show you something over here. As many of you may already know, on my other channel, I posted a picture that uh, Richie's Outdoors sent me, a super fan from Pennsylvania. He made a sketch of my truck. If you haven't seen it yet, go over to the other channel and check it out. But he also sent me a sticker to his business. And because of the, he sent that picture and it was, you know, a lot of people liked it. Some people laughed at it, but I, I got a kick out of it. And uh, he sent me a sticker to his business. And there it is. It, it earned a spot on my revered tailgate here, right under the Easton made. So yeah, check out his channel. He uh, he uses a 1986 200X three-wheeler to get his uh, firewood out of the woods. So go by his channel and check it out, but I appreciate that. I meant to film me putting that on there, but I actually started the film and I got about two minutes in and then my phone crashed. I don't know if it's too cold or what. So it's already on there now. One was, once it's on, I couldn't have pulled it off and put it back on. So it's already on there and uh, that's enough of that. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on the tripod here and take you over to the saw and uh, get to work on that because I've got a delivery to do. I got I still got to split the wood. I'm done playing games. As you can see, I already put a, a block of uh, white oak in there. The customer requested a splitting block that has some knots in it. I think that'll work really good for many years for them to split their kindling on. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set you up over here and get going with what I normally do to the saws <clears throat> after a tank of gas or when the, ch when the chain gets dull, basically. Yes, I know it gets dull, but it is sure, if the chain isn't cut like this was, and I I'll put at the end of this video, I'll put a link to the last time I used this, and it wasn't cutting at all. That's a dull chain. But if it cuts through the wood, if it cuts through, yeah, even though I gotta maybe put a little, little, uh, Elbow grease into it, put put my weight into it. It's not a big deal, you know. As long as it's cutting and it is throwing chips. Now I know when it gets down to sawdust and I really gotta push it, then it's dull. And I'll be the first to admit when it's dull. But uh yeah, we just loosen the what I do is just loosen these off. I'm gonna wear my gloves as much as possible because it's like 28 degrees right now, and uh, I know my fingers are gonna freeze handling this steel here. But the first thing I always do. Once I get that off there, I uh, then I, I loosen the chain, the ch chain tens tensioner, and take the bar off. Now this was right side up, so when I put the bar back on in the chain, it's, I'm going to flip it over. That's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to set that right there. I don't think the bar needs to be, uh, I don't think there's any burrs on it, but I'm going to just show you anyway what how I uh, remove the burrs off the bar. So, first thing I do is I sharpen the chain. So let me put the, adjust the seat here, and I'll mark I'll mark a one tooth with this uh, marker here. And uh, I usually don't do anything with the rakers until like maybe six times sharpening, and then I'll take them down a lot. I just it just takes a long time to do it with this, so I'm, so I'm not even going to mess with it today. So. I'll go ahead and mark the start tooth and then get this lined up. A little bit tighter. See how that is. There you go. I'm sure a lot of you guys are hand filers. I'm not I'm not saying which is better. This just works best for me. And yes, I do usually carry extra chains with me when I cut, when it gets dull, and I flip it out. But lately, I, I, I've just been, uh, just been cutting one truckload at a time. And usually two saws with two sharp chains is enough to do it. I shouldn't have to swap it out. I can't handle cutting all day long. That's why I buy the wood. One truckload a day is all I can handle cutting. All I want to do. I 
I might have to start up the Easton Maid and warm up my fingers. Because they're already frozen. Should be coming up to the start too real soon. There it is. All right. I swap this over to, to do the other side. Locked in. Adjust this backstop. I get it on the, there's the tooth right there that it goes to. I'll set it up on this one. And when I get to that one, then that's it for the chain. So just gotta light line this up and get it so it's just barely touching it. Should make a video using this at either Darren's or Herb's honey hole. You guys will still cry that it's dull. Or most of you will. Even though it's cutting right through the wood. But when it doesn't cut, I'll admit it's dull. I'm not afraid to do that. You guys say it's dull from the start. It goes right through it. But this is only a 20 inch chain. The longer ones. The 28 inch chain takes a long time, especially when it's full tooth, not uh, skip tooth. So there, the chain's sharp. So that's out of the way. Now, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna, and I don't think the bar needs it, but I'm just gonna show you, just because it's something I do. Um, I got this, I got the air compressor all filled up. It's on, it might kick on. Usually I feel to see if there's any burrs around here, which there really isn't, but I'll just go just to demonstrate what I do. I'm going to take this die grinder off, which I ordered this on Amazon. I'm going to get this off. Uh, Air sprayer. The next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. Pull this out. And blow up the saw. As you can see, I've never done this one before, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. There's another there. There, oh, I had to push that down. 
All right, there's the air filter. One thing you definitely got to do is push this all the way down, like into the start position, and it blocks blocks this the carburetor because if you blow it like with this up, it uh it let uh, dust go inside there. So now. Hopefully I can put this on easier than it was to take off. Hopefully. Okay, grab the chain. And then like, like you saw, the steel was up, right side up. Now I, I've tried to flip it every time I change the chain. I gotta get that, that splitter started. My fingers got frostbite. But like some of these jobs, man, you, you can't do it wearing gloves. You gotta have the accuracy of your fingers. It's loose, now I gotta tighten this up. I like the chains on there, it's relatively tight, maybe not that tight. Got to be able to pull it. Oh, and now, there. Check to see how tight it is. I need to be able to, you need to be able to pull it. That's a little too tight. I'll loosen this back up. You should be able to pull it freely. chainsaw is ready to go just need to add fuel all right guys check out some of these videos here at the end i got to get to work thaw out my fingers so we'll definitely see you guys at the next one thanks for watching